Hey guys, Talk Recycling FPV, and I'm working on a couple RMAs today. So the first one we're going to do, let me uh, let me get my camera situated here. Uh, let me see if I've got this. Yeah, it's about right, I guess. Okay. <sighs> All right, we got everything situated here. The first one we're going to be looking at, I believe, when we go, my computer is going to be a Sector Five. Uh, so let me go ahead and let's do like this. Let me open the box up. And for anybody who is wondering why we had a delay, we had a little family emergency uh, that lasted almost seven days. So it's been a little bit hectic, and I am finally able to catch up again. So let me go ahead and pull the Sector 5 out. All right, let's see what's going on. It had something to do with startup tones, but I'm going to open this up first and just make sure. Um, I'm not really a fan of this here, so just keep in mind that when you put something like this on here, you are restricting the flow of air, and you can things can heat up more. Now, let me also show you that what's being hidden under here, um, this board is completely compressed. So this is the kind of stuff you have to be careful with. So let me just show you what I see, okay? So let me pop this up. Now, I'm just opening this, so let me zoom in here just so I can show you guys. Do you see how this board is sitting? I mean, because it's covered with this piece here you can't see anything right but if you lift it up I'm gonna hold this quad straight and you're gonna see that this board is sitting at an angle okay so here's the ruler and this board is sitting at that angle that is not straight okay and what that tells me is that obviously the board's compressed what concerns me is that is the board touching is anything on the on the bottom sorry well, it could be my wife no it's not but let me see we've got so much stuff going on um, I'll have to stop that and then the car the call's gonna ring again so bear with me a second sorry guys when it's live this is what happens hello yes hey Josh how are you all right guys I apologize for that that was a counselor that I need to speak to so that became a private call I needed to turn off so let's just look back here where we're at so as you can see what I was saying was the board is slanted right so if you take this ruler you can see it's slanted. but then once you lift this you can also see look at the difference in the screw uh, the exposed or remaining threads of the screw this one is about oh my god I'm gonna say five mil but I don't know oh it's close it's gonna be between let's see let's say four mil and this one's about one mil so we know and it's not consistent because I can see on the other side that the screws are the threads are more exposed in some areas so what this tells me is that this customer took this board off at some point okay to do something and then tightened it down so tight uh, that we, we might have a problem here so if we can and it's hard to see but um, because of the way the wires are sitting, it's hard to see anything else here to see if something's touching. But this is definitely a problem. I don't know if that's what's uh, I don't know if that's what's causing the problem the customer is having. But what we do know is that this is not the way it should be. So right off the bat, there's something wrong. Uh, again, taking this, um, adding these little side pieces doesn't make any sense. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't inhibit any of the airflow. I wouldn't restrict any of the airflow in this in any quad for that matter. Um, uh, especially if you're talking about, you know, ESC temps or anything else. Uh, so, uh, and, and if that's how HDLRC did it, if that's what they're giving you, I would definitely uh, not use it um, because airflow uh, uh, through these uh, devices is extremely critical, especially if you have an HD unit, for example. Um, so I'm just going to take this apart here piece by piece, and we're going to see what we're working with. Oh, I see what they did here. And I remember we did that about two years ago on a Diablo design. It's about time people are doing it. Uh, let's take that. Let's take this. Let's take, oh, that's going to be an M2 or a different socket. So let me do that here. Is that 2.5? I have no idea. Anyways, let's see if we get this off. Okay. With this removed, let's get this junk off of here. Uh, and like I said, if this is what HDLRC is doing, I wouldn't use it. Uh, it's definitely not um, something I would recommend at all. It's showy and that's it. Somebody might argue that, oh, it'll keep the components clean. Well, I'm going to tell you something. That doesn't matter at this point. Okay, so we do have a, 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 uh, a board that is really clamped down pretty tight. Um, so I'm going to, now let me look at the rest of this. So 
What is going on here? Okay, okay. I'll put these here for the time being. Yikes. All right. I'm hesitant to turn it on, but at the same time, I want to see, let me, I've got my smoke stopper ready. I'll put this up to like 12 volts. Let me turn this off. Let's get ready to plug it in, and then we'll just see what happens. Um, hopefully there's nothing bad, but if there is a smoke stop, we'll stop it. Okay, and that's it. We don't get any initialization. I'm also going to unplug the VTX because, well, I'll tell you what. Let's just get started on this because this is going to be a problem here. I don't know if the screw is going to be spinning underneath or not yet, but yeah, it looks like it is. All right. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. One. I mean, this is definitely cranked down too hard. So I, I will say that right off the bat, if this was me, I'd be like, look, uh, you know, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything about this. And, and, and it may be that it didn't do anything, we're gonna see, but you have to realize that, you know, you've got components on both sides of these boards that can easily short out. I mean, that's just the way it is, which is why there is all this, um, which is why we have our standoffs, which is why we try to keep, you know, about five millimeters of space, perhaps. All right, so the board is now able to be removed. Um, holy cow, this is really, Keep that up there. Let's see what we got here. to unplug uh, the VTX so it doesn't interfere with our feed. So bear with me a second. X is now powered off. We can leave that out there for the time being. Put all this stuff away. All right. Let me go close this door here. Sorry, the noise makes one of my dogs go crazy at the starting of the ESC. So I need to close the door so she doesn't keep freaking out. Anyways, okay, so let's see what we got. Now let's power. Okay, now let's get this thing plugged into Betaflight and see what we're working with. Bear with me a second, I'll put the screen up there for you. Okay, here we go.
Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and reflash this properly um, and take it from there because one thing that I'm noticing is uh, I am seeing more people go outside of the um, of this scope of firmware, uh, whether it is to put um, uh, filtering on or what have you, uh, and in either case though. Uh, when I get to this point, a lot of people will play with this and not know what they're doing, and then next thing you know, stuff's not working properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this back to, I'm going to flash this back, and I'm going to see if it starts back up uh, once the firmware has been flashed. So that should be flashed. It looks okay. So now I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to write it. There could probably be nothing to write. Click OK. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to write that as well. Okay. And then I'm going to click Disconnect, and we should hear it now. Okay. Excellent. And now you can see that it initializes properly. Okay, so we go back to our firmware. Now let's let's go back here. Okay, let's re. Oops, 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 oops. What's, what's going on here? Let me let me disconnect. Make sure nothing's hitting the keyboard. Okay, I think we're good. Let's go back and connect. All right, let's reset. Let's calibrate. Let's go to our motors now, and let's arm and see what happens. So motor one, motor one is spinning counterclockwise. Motor two is also spinning counterclockwise. Motor three is also spinning counterclockwise. And motor four is spinning clockwise. Okay, so look, obviously something's been messed around with here because none of this is working properly. So I'm gonna flip your motor direction back, click okay, click save and reboot. Guys, you gotta, you gotta understand that I don't know who made all the changes on this thing, but this is kind of weird because now when I connect, right? So I wanna go to my motors again, and I just wanna see. So let's do it again, motor one, counter, Motor two, counter, motor three, counter, motor four, clockwise. Okay, so I'm gonna disconnect. I'm gonna go back to my BL Heli, right here. I'm gonna read the setup again, and I'm gonna tell it that I want motor one to be regular, right? And I'm gonna write that, okay? All right, now we go two is regular, three is regular, and four. You see that right there? So the only one that was wrong, somebody had switched this off. So it's, it's, the whole thing is, is configured wrong. And I don't know, I mean, it looks like it's brand new, which tells me that maybe whoever got this just read about how to do it or asked somebody how to do it, but it was configured completely incorrectly. So now you have it initializing. And now when you run your motors and we go to activate them like this, we can see Motor one will spin correctly. Motor two, counter, motor three, counter, and motor four, correct. All right, so that's it. So the quad is now back to normal, okay? But this is not at fault of the, of the quad. This is at fault of the person programming the quad, which, no, no offense, but I mean, it's just the way it is. Okay, so while we're doing that now, what we need to do is I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect from here. Uh, actually, you know what? Let me go to the CLI real quick. Let's do a uh, version check. Uh, 4.3.1, okay, July, okay. All right, good. All right, so let's just, uh, let's exit out of this, okay? And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna power it down and we're gonna put everything back together properly, okay? Just like that. Power this down, okay? And we're going to screw everything back normally, and we're going to make sure that the spacing is right, and we're not going to screw anything up on here. And this way, we can be guaranteed that when this guy gets his drone back, it'll be functioning like it's supposed to. Stop playing with the um, firmware on the uh, ESC. Um, I know everybody wants filtering, but again, let me tell you that I get a lot of drones where the filtering, people playing with the filtering has caused the drone to fail. Um, and so, you know, I mean, people playing with the firmware, sorry, has caused the drone to fail, and they're doing it for the sake of um, filtering purposes, right? So 
just fly the quad. I don't know how else to tell you guys this. Have fun with the drone the way it is. I promise you, um, I promise you that they're very good with standard, uh, with standard settings. They're very good. And I get that there's people who want to do this and that, blah, blah, blah. Look, look let me tell you something, okay? Put it like this. I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. And, and, and don't take this the wrong way because I'm not meaning it with any disrespect, but you can go buy the best golf club in the world. You're still not going to beat Tiger Woods if he's flying with a broomstick. I mean, if he's, a, if he's golfing with a broomstick, okay? So get the most out of your quad and understand how it functions before you start adding all these changes just because some people say, oh, you have to have this or, oh, my God, this makes it so much better. You don't, you don't have, and I'm, I'm not saying for this customer in particular, but I'm saying in general from the people I talk to who make this mistake, they don't have a um, they don't have a starting point, a zero, right? To say, oh, okay, well, I know what it, I know how it flies. Now I'm going to upgrade. They're just like, oh, well, I heard this is the way to go, so I want to do it. Well, don't, don't follow, because I promise you that a lot of the things that we're seeing here, especially lately, a lot of the things that I'm repairing lately are all things that could be avoided if people uh, kind of just turned off the advice for a minute, like turned off the videos and turned off and just went out and had fun, right? And just learned like uh, filtering, like RPM filtering. Okay, what do you need it for? Because uh, there's noise on the gyro because you have a lot of noise. Well, what does that mean to you? What does the noise mean to you if you haven't flown that much? You don't know what that means. Experience it first, figure out if it's something you even need to worry about and then, and then deal with it. But don't go killing yourself trying to do it all at one time because I promise you it's just not worth it. All right? It's not worth it. I think sometimes people do a lot of things here to try to make themselves, try to show how smart they are. But when it comes to practicality and, and uh, overall use, you know, I'm not sure that it really matters that much. No, smart. People have to sometimes make themselves look smart for reasons that don't make much sense, I guess. But I think this quad would fly perfect. Uh, as a matter of fact, I know it will. Let me just say that. It's not an I think. I know it will fly perfect without adding RPM filtering. Okay? I know that. I know that for a fact. So um, stay off the RPM filtering. Stay off changing the firmware. God, I hate putting these in. Uh, stay off changing the uh, uh, BL Heli firmware if you can. The firmware that's on it right now is great. So leave it enjoy it and for everybody that disagrees with me um, don't really care I think people just sometimes like to look really 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 smart and sometimes it doesn't it's not necessary All right, let's put this back on get this going this gentleman can enjoy his quad again and we can call it a day.
All right, and once you get ready to bolt these down, just make sure that the screw tip, the top of the threading area goes, just touches the surface, right, of the, of the uh, lock nut. That's it. Uh, no need to go any crazier than that. I mean, if you have to make up for some, if it's a long screw, that's fine. But these people that crank down on these things, it really doesn't help you at all, I promise you. It's not gonna do anything. You want to leave, you know, you don't have to kill this thing to make it to hold. These are lock nuts, so they're gonna hold once you get it past the nylon uh, material. So let's just put it nicely, just like that. Use the top of the uh, lock nut as your, as your stopping point. Okay, and then let me check this out real quick. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Now, let's see. Holy cow, this is loose too, right? Okay, one, two. Let's put this here. Let's get this here. I'm not sure why they would kink this so hard like that, but okay. We can try it by going like this. Okay, I have an elusive gold screw that is 
now somewhere. So I have to try to find it. Let me see, make sure it's not been attached to any of these magnets. Nope. Maybe it fell. I'll find that one in a second. Uh, as far as the rest of this goes, we are not going to put these back on. The customer can have those back, but I would encourage him not to put them on. Let me see if I can find. Oh, here it is. There we go. This away. This on here. And then I'll fire it up one time for you guys to be able to see. Hopefully the uh, VTX does not interfere. If it does, I apologize ahead of time to you guys. But let's just see. Actually, you know what? I may not. Let me, let me just see. Let's get this in beta flight first. This way I can spin the motors for you properly and you can see them ha you can see it happen in real time. Okay, but you won't have to see beta flight. I'm gonna give you two screens that way. You can see it clearly. Let's go to reset, calibrate, let's go to motors, and then we're gonna turn it on. Here we go. Ready? Motor one, there it is, motor two, there it is, motor three, there it is, and motor four. There it is. Everything's working perfect. I'm going to turn that off, power it off. Everything else is set. Enjoy, have fun, because the rest of the system is functioning perfectly, and you should be good to go. I'm going to turn that off. All right, guys. So look, uh, again, it's not here to, I'm not here to have an argument with anybody about it, but I will tell you this. Look, think about three years ago, right? Think about 2017 when NAS1, uh, the, the, sorry, the NAS32, F1 boards, right? The NAS32, which is still one of the best boards ever made, in my opinion. It could last through anything, right? And drones flew fast and they flew accurately then. And yes, they continue to evolve and we continue to get new hardware and stuff, but don't be so quick to run and have to do this or that or this or that because somebody who, you know, there's no, there's no doubt, right? There's no doubt that um, certain advances like can be better for that person that's within a 10th of a second on a race or something, fine. But for the flyers that are out there having a good time, um, I promise you, just stick to the basics and you'll be just fine. Watching videos and people who you know take the moment to feel smart and they're like, hey, look, look how smart I am. You're going to learn something today because I'm so smart and blah blah blah. Man, look. At the end of the day, I've seen <laughs> I've seen tuning videos for people who don't tune. Right? Uh, they just want to look smart. They want to get those traffic numbers up. They want to get that advertising money. They want to get that Google money, that YouTube money. I mean, Man, look. Stay away from all that. Okay? Just get the drone. Make it basic. Put the firmware on there and go with it as it is and don't add any other features. And I promise you, you'll be fine. Now I'm not saying that's what this guy did, but I'm giving that advice because more of the drones I have sent into me are people who watched the video and tried to, oh, I want to do, I want to do, um, uh, I want to add filtering to mine. Well, what for? Why do you need it? Because somebody told you you did? Uh, because you detected something, noise in the black box that you don't really know how to read yet? I mean, look, at the end of the day, the quads will fly awesome if you just learn to fly them properly, okay? For the most part, for the most part, all right. Anyways, that's about it. You don't have to agree with me, but you do have to understand that I see a lot of these come in from people just trying to keep up with the Joneses, and honestly, the Joneses aren't really, aren't really the people to follow anyway. All right, guys, God bless, be safe. Most of all, please subscribe to the channel. Whether you agree with me or not, this is the channel where we do repairs, and as you can see right here, hopefully, oh, that's my wife. So I'm gonna end this here. Uh, God bless, be safe. Most of all, guys, go spend time with your family. You never know how much time you have left. Go make the most of it. We'll see you soon, guys. Peace, bye. Thank you.